Hello and welcome to today's video and in today's video I'm on a woodland walk um, This is actually one of the first times I've been out since quarantine on a, like, a nice walk like this enjoying some of the forest area It's absolutely stunning here, you can hear the birds singing and it's a really great day to be out But I'm going to be doing in today's video as well is also just getting some photographs here Taking the dog for a walk and then I'm going to show you how I edit my photographs and show you some processing I do And hopefully we're just going to get some really cool shots So yeah, I mean just look at this place it is awesome big question is now which way back where we came right or straight ahead straight ahead so you join me behind an absolutely spectacular view this is absolutely stunning uh, this was just a random walkway we took didn't know where it would bring us and look at this behind me i just got my drone up in the air and got amazing photographs and i'm going to get another photograph here just wow this is stunning So I've been on this nature walk for a while now and we're nearly finished and nearly back to the car and wow it has been absolutely beautiful day out. I really have enjoyed it, I've been able to capture some absolutely stunning photographs that I'm really happy with and I find nature is just amazing. You can always find new and unique opportunities. You have a drone, you can fly up in the air and get some awesome aerial shots. If you have a macro lens you can see what the macro world is doing and then just again every day with the forest everything changes you know no matter what time of day it is it can be the morning it could be the evening it could be night it always offers you unique and fun new opportunities for photography and that goes with the seasons as well winter spring summer autumn forests are always changing and i always love that about them because you will never get the same photograph twice really you'll always get something new you always get something unique and exciting and i think today i've been able to capture some of those unique and fun photographs so i think we should just start heading home and then i can start processing and editing some of the photographs we have captured today let's go so you join me back at home and before we start editing the photos today i have just got an email saying that one of my new parcels has arrived and i really can't wait for this one but I have no idea where it is, so I'm going to find it, then we're going to do a quick unboxing, and then we're going to continue with today's video. Let's begin. So I'm pretty certain I have just found my parcel. This is an interesting delivery. I think the delivery driver has literally thrown this parcel over the gate, and um, yeah, that's not very fun, is it? Right, here is the parcel. It seems to be okay, no damage, so it was either lobbed over the fence or something like that, but not the best delivery, but it is an Amazon parcel, which means it's sweating sighting inside, so I can't wait. I've been looking forward to this. My tripod just decided to jump ship and nearly died, and now my camera's a little bit wonky. I need to readjust you, wait there. There you go. So, what we're going to do is just a little quick unboxing and we can see what is inside this and I can't wait. Oh. 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 Get out of the way. Boom. Here it is. Oh, this thing looks awesome. But then you can tell by now, it is a new camera bag. And... <laughs> oh my. That is a monster. That is a tank. So 
So I probably haven't even mentioned what camera bag this is. This is the Low Pro Pro Tactic 450 AW2, and I've wanted this camera bag for a very long time because it's very sturdy and it also looks badass. That looks just awesome. So I'll probably do a full video on this in the future. But for now, that has just been a quick unboxing of this camera bag. And let's continue with today's video. Whoa! Whoa! So you join me and we're now going to edit one of the photographs from today. And the image I have chosen is this one right here. Now I really do like this image, but there is a lot we can do to make it really stand out and work. And I've had a number of requests from people who wanted to see how I process a typical image. So hopefully this will help you out. And without any further delay, let's jump in and start editing this photograph. So I'm going to start editing a photograph. And the first thing I'm going to do is apply a preset. So I'm going to apply this preset preset right here and it has already changed the image a lot but there is a lot more adjustments I will need to make to this photograph. Now I find that with presets they'll always get you a certain amount of the way there they'll never 100% get you to that final stage all you need to do once you apply the preset is make final tweaks to your photograph and it will be awesome so that's what we're going to continue with right now but before we do that I need to apply a crop to this photograph. Now in terms of cropping it I can leave it exactly how it is or I could apply a 4x5 aspect ratio crop for Instagram. Now, if you don't know why you need to use the 4x5 aspect ratio for Instagram, then I have made a very old video about the best export settings for Instagram being one of the corners in the eye right there. Might be helpful to you so you can get the best possible quality photographs onto Instagram and avoid all the compression that Instagram does to photography. So jumping over now to the basic settings, there is a lot we can adjust for this photograph. So for this image, I'm not going to make any changes to the exposure or the contrast, but I am going to bring the highlights all the way down because you can actually see it brings out the sky a lot more. And then to remove some of the shadow that's on my face and you can't really see the detail right here in the photograph, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to turn the shadows all the way up as well. Then from here, I'm actually going to turn the whites all the way down a bit more to about minus 88. And then I'm going to bring down the blacks a little bit, maybe up a little bit to minus 24. Then with the clarity, I do have the option of adding a bit more sharpness, which I could, just a small amount. With certain subjects, it works to add more clarity. With others, it doesn't. So just use this sparingly and see what results you can get. Then I'm not going to do anything with the dehaze, the vibrancy, or the saturation. And that should now be the basic settings all complete. Now, jumping over to the tone curves, I find with the tone curves, there's a lot you can do to manipulate your image and make your image really stand out. There is a lot more learning I need to do with the tone curves, but I've been trying new things with them and been getting some really cool results. So tone curves, I think, just take a little bit longer to adjust to and learn. But once you have nailed them, you're able to make some really cool results. But with this preset that I've already applied, there have been some adjustments already made to the tone curve so all I'm going to do is readjust them to a point that I am happy with. Starting off with some of the adjustments I'm going to start off with the black levels right here and you can see if I turn them up what they do that is the area they are changing but I'm going to bring them down to about here not too much I just wanted to remove some of those black levels a little bit more because I think they were a little bit too intense for this photograph. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make some changes to the shadows a little bit I'm going to bring them down a small amount but not too much just a little micro change. With the exposure I'm going to bring that down a little bit as well but very small slight change again and then with the highlights I'm actually just going to make a final adjustment to about here and you can see it's making some changes to the background and the clouds and then with those final adjustments all made that should be the tone curves completed and now I'm ready to move over to the color settings now with the color I'm going to start off with playing around with the hues now the hues can really help change certain colors and completely manipulate them so with the oranges I'm going to bring them down to about minus four it's a very slight change and then I'm also going to make some changes to the yellows as well by bringing them up to about plus 40 I reckon around here you can actually see it's making a lot of changes to the color in the grass and that's making a really cool change that I'm really happy with and then from here I don't think I need to change any more settings with the hues then in terms of saturation one color I'm going to turn up immediately is the reds I'm going to bring them up to about 70 nearly and that will really allows the coat to stand out because that is a really nice prime color that I want to stand out in this image I want that to be a really eye-catching feature in this photo in particular. From here, I'm gonna add some further coloring to the oranges. I'm gonna bring them up to about 50. And 
once the oranges are changed, I don't need to make any more changes to the saturation. In terms of luminancy, I don't think there's anything I can change. I might just turn down the aquas a little bit and bring out that cloud a little bit more, but nothing too much. And I might also do the same with the blue, just to make that sky a little bit more dramatic. Now, with those few settings changed already, we can see that this photo has already had a significant impact and is already making some great changes towards getting that final image. So now let's continue with the next settings. Now in terms of split toning, I don't really use split toning much in my images. Um, I use it maybe now and then, but it's not a solid setting that I will always use. So we're going to skip over that. Now in terms of detail, I'm going to use this masking tool. So what you want to do is hold alt and then use your left key on your mouse. And then you could drag this slider and you'll see it has this like weird black and white effect. But basically what this is telling me is the areas that it will apply sharpness to. So I want it really on the subject itself. So I'm going to bring it up to a quite high level to about 70. And then the amount of sharpening, I'm going to bring it up to about 55. Then with the detail, I'm going to turn this up as well to about 32. And then this image should be perfect. And we're now ready to move on to the lens correction. Now the next setting is lens correction. Now with the lens correction, it can make some really good impacts and changes to your photographs. I usually just put this on, remove chromatic aberrations and enable lens profile connection. Honestly, sometimes I 100% don't have a clue what it's doing, but it usually does a good job at it. So I just turn it on and leave it to do its thing. With some lenses, you can actually notice more of a significant impact. If I just turn it on and off, you can see it is changing the image very so slightly. But with other lenses, you can actually see like almost sometimes vignette effect around the edges. This kind of setting will just remove that and just make your image look a lot more professional. So just use it if you need to on your photographs. And that is lens correction complete. So the next setting is transform and I hardly ever do anything with a transform setting. So I'm just going to not touch that. And then the effects, I'm not going to put a vignette on this photograph. You know, I feel like everyone at a stage went through like a vignette effect where they had to slap on a vignette on everything. It couldn't have just been me going through that stage. But yeah, I don't want to like look really cool by applying a vignette. So I'm just going to like turn it off and go to zero. And now with the calibration, there is a lot of changes you can make right here with calibration. And I feel like this can really help manipulate your image and get a certain tone and feel to your photograph. And I've been experimenting a lot more with calibration, playing around with the different settings. And I find you can do a lot of awesome things with these settings. So just play around with them and see what you can do and what effects you can get to your photographs. Starting from the top, the shadows, I don't really make any major changes to these at all, so I just leave this how it is. Now with the hues, I'm going to make a small adjustment and bring these up to about minus 10, maybe to about there. And then with the colour actually saturation, I'm going to bring it down to about minus 10, just some small changes and it will make a big impact overall. Then with the green primaries, I'm going to turn these down to minus 12, just a little bit of adjustment again. And then I'm going to bring up the colours to about 24, just bring them up a little bit more and add a bit more punchiness. Now with this image in particular, there has already been some blue primary changes, but I'm going to make them a little bit more. More. I'm going to bring this down to minus 52 and bring the saturation to about 24 I reckon and that should allow some of the colours to stand out a little bit more. And then that is all the major settings complete and I'm really happy with where this image is at especially from where it started from to where we have finished that but there is one more thing I'm going to apply to this image to make it stand out a little bit more and that is applying a radial filter do is select this tool right here and then what we're going to do is draw basically a circle around our main subject just make some final adjustments and what this will basically do is everything outside the circle will make an adjustment to say for example i turn down the exposure you can see that it's only changing the areas here rather than all over the image so we're going to play around with this until we get our final look now for the background what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn up the contrast quite a bit to about 63 and then going to Bring down the highlights a little bit more once again for this image. I'm completely dropping the highlights in this image, just completely removing them. The shadows, and I'm going to add a little bit more, but then with the whites again, I'm going to turn them down a little bit as well. I'm going to just feather it a little bit more so it's more accurate because you can notice there is a bit of exposure difference between the clouds here and the clouds here. So we just want to make sure that that looks accurate across the board. And then we can click done, and then I think. This photograph is complete and that is before and that is after and this image has just gone from a 180 really. It has gone from a bland 
bit boring image to something that looks really dramatic, to something that looks really cool, and I've been able to use all the tools in Lightroom to completely transform this image into something awesome. And yeah, that is how I have been able to edit this photograph. So that has been today's video, I hope you have enjoyed it, I have really enjoyed making this video today from doing the forestry stuff and getting all that uh, beautiful b-roll stuff to getting my new camera bag and hopefully you have also enjoyed seeing how I process a typical image and if you'd like to see more of that in the future then please let me know in the comment section below. And yes, I really do hope you have enjoyed today's video and until next time, take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now!